Hey guys, it's Andrew here from Simo Apps, and in this tutorial, we're going to look at Swift UI and create a Hello World application. So, what is Swift UI? It's a new way in Swift to actually set up the user interface of our applications. It can be done in both code and with a visual editor. And the great thing about it is, whatever you do in the code gets updated in the visual editor, and whatever you do in the visual editor also gets updated automatically in the code. So no longer do you have storyboard versus coding. You can do both of these at the same time and the corresponding items will get updated. And the second cool feature is you see a live preview. So as you're coding the application, you can actually see a preview of the UI update in real time. So you don't have to run the app every time you want to check the UI updates, which can take up to one to two minutes. So that does actually add up over time. And it can also be used with UI kit, which is the old way of creating apps. So I'll also cover that. In order to do this at the current time of recording, you'll need the Xcode beta. And to see the live preview, you'll need Mac OS Catalina preview as well. So let's get into the coding. All right, so let's jump into the Swift UI, shall we? So open up the Xcode beta, and we're going to create a new Xcode project a new single view application, and we are going to name ours Adopt a Cat. Make sure the use Swift UI checkbox is checked, then hit next, then create your project. Okay, so you'll see your project here and you'll notice a few changes immediately. We still have our app delegate and this behaves as per normal. It has a lifecycle functions for your application. Then we now have this scene delegate and content view. So the scene delegate is responsible for controlling the Swift UI. We're not going to dive into too much detail on that in this tutorial. The one we're going to focus on is the content view. And this is where you actually code your app using Swift UI to add text fields, input labels, and so on. So you'll see here by default, this content view is opened up. And we have our content view structure here. We have import Swift UI instead of UI kit. And we have this structure content view of a type view. And it's got a body which has a text hello world in it. So on the right hand side, we have our automatic preview. It will automatically be paused by default. So if we hit resume, let that run. It may take 30 seconds or so to load but this is actually going to show us a live preview of our app UI as we make changes. All right, so we can see we have our text label here, hello world. If we click on it, it will highlight the relevant code, which is text hello world. We can do ABC. We see it update straight away. So as you can see here, this is a really cool balance between storyboards and coding to create a UI where you can still use some sort of interface. You can still drag and drop elements inspect their properties and so on. So I can go inspect here. I can change the font to title. You can't see it too well here. Actually, it's just updated. We can see it's updated to title case and it's also added this dot font. Then in the brackets, it's of a type title to our text. So that's pretty neat, isn't it? Now, if you want your live preview, remember you need to have Mac OS Catalina installed. And I did have a problem with mine where it just would throw an error every time. So if you do, you'll see a diagnostics button up here and you might need to run sudo xcode build dash license to make sure you agree the latest xcode license terms. And if you still have issues with it, try to restart Xcode or your computer because it's still in beta. Apple are updating it before the actual release, but give that a go and see how you go. And then you'll notice down here, we have this if debug statement and if. So what this is, is it's a directive to only run this code when we're in our debug mode. So when it's in production, this code won't get run on the app store at all. But what this does is this rendering our content view up the top here in this preview. So this is handy if you wanted to actually render a small part of your preview. If you had some complicated UI and you're updating a tiny bit, you could actually just preview that tiny bit only or combine views to see what they might look like in a preview. 
Okay, so let's get to coding our app. So we're going to make our app adopt a cat. So this cat's name is going to be Ginger. And we've got the font title. We can also change other properties if we just change on command. So if we do dot color, we can add in dot orange as the color for the text and give it a second and it's going to update in our live preview on the right. How cool is that? So just a quick note, the code is your source of truth. The live preview will update as you're coding. I'm running on an older MacBook Air, so it is a bit slower. So if it doesn't update immediately, don't fret, just give it a second to update. And you can also see here, if you hit command, click on the element, you've got a bunch of different options. If you go inspect, you can see we can also change the text in here. We wanna add a few more A's. ABC that updates. Let's change that back. You can change the font, the weight. You can also change the color in here, the alignment of the text and so on. So all the nice good things you're used to having in the Xcode editor, you can also edit in the live preview pane and it will automatically update your code as you change it. So let's add some more text. The first one I'll do is through the UI. So if we hit this add button up in the top right, we can see we have our new views here. So this isn't UI kit views, these are different. It's the own new Swift UI. We've got some new layout views to actually control the layout of our app. And then we've got the control views. So we've got text, which is also known as UI label in UI kit. It's different toggle, date pickers, sliders, and so on. So we're going to add in more text. So just drag that. And you can see you can put it above or below in a new vertical stack. So we're going to put it below. You'll see our code gets updated. We have this new text placeholder and it gets put in a vertical stack here. Important thing to note in this body view, if you have multiple elements such as multiple text items, it must be contained in some sort of parent stack. Otherwise it throws an error. So that's why it does it automatically for the UI. If you also simply just add the code text, it would throw an error and we need to wrap it in a vertical stack, which is on top of each other or a horizontal stack, which is side by side. So let's name that text age. And this is going to be for the age of the cat. And we'll add a new text field called 22. So the cat's going to be 22 years old. So, it's had a pretty good life so far, but for some reason it's up for adoption. And I'm just gonna fix up my code layout here. Xcode isn't the best at automatically formatting the code for Swift UI. I hope they do make some sort of thing where it does automatically format for you properly, but let's see how that goes. Okay, so we've got our cat Ginger of age 22 years old. Now, if we want to put the age and 22 next to each other, we're going to add a horizontal stack by coding. So do H stack, curly brackets. We're gonna move this text age and 22 to be inside it. And let's give it a second. Boom, we see our apps updated. We've got our age and 22 right next to it. So now what if we want them a bit more apart? We can add something called a spacer. So if we do spacer and close that off, this is actually going to space them out to the very edges of the screen. So the age is on the far left and the 22 is on the far right. You can control the space of parameters, but I'll show you a neat trick to actually control that with padding. So at the end of our horizontal stack, we can add padding. And if we just do padding and close the brackets, it's got some default settings in there, which actually renders quite nicely. So we're going to use that. So with that horizontal stack, let's copy that down. Do age and we'll do it's one more. So we have three ages showing. Next one we'll do is the weight and this cat, so four kg. Finally, location will show as Sydney. All right, so we can see our app UI coming together quite neatly. It's quite simple with code. And the best thing is it's updating real time. So we don't need to rerun the app every time to see what it looks like or play around the storyboard, which can be very, very fiddly. 
So at the end of it, let's add a button. So we're going to add it from the view. So we'll add a button, we'll drag it into the actual code. And you'll notice you can drop it right into the code instead of actually on the view as well, wherever you want it to render. So that's also a nice little feature. Um, we're not going to give it any action and the text we'll give it is adopt. Then we're just going to add a spacer in between the button and everything else above it. That's going to push the button to the bottom of the screen, as we can see here, and all the content to the top. And on that vertical stack, let's add some padding. All right, so we've got our cat details here. Now let's add an actual image of the cat. So I've got an image already of a cat called MVP cat. So let's go to our assets. We're going to drag that into there. You can download that image below or find an image of any cat you like. And we're going to create a new Swift UI view for that image. I'll go file, new file, select Swift UI view, go next. We're going to save it as profile image. Make sure your app is selected as a target, hit create. And make sure it actually appears under your project folder here called profile image. I did have an issue where it was appearing at a level above under here. And even if I dragged and dropped it into the folder below, it still wouldn't work. So I had to delete and recreate the folder. Not sure if that's a bug, but just keep an eye out for that. All right, so we've got our new profile image here. Like for the content view, the automatic preview will be disabled. So hit resume to spin that up. And to add an image, it's super easy. You might have guessed, simply add image. We can do MVP cat. So the actual name of the image, and let's see what happens. Awesome, the cat image loads up straight away, and you'll notice by default, all of the items of Swift UI are automatically centered on the screen or relative to where they're placed inside a stack or container. What we can also do, we can do dot clip shape. We can pass in a circle, close that off, and this is automatically going to make this shape of the image a circle, which is so, so handy. If you've ever done this in UIKit before, it's easy, but it's a bit fiddly, so they've made it super easy. So it's really awesome to see these features added in. And we can keep on chaining on that. We can just go to a new line and do dot overlay. If we add a circle, we can add a stroke. In those brackets, we'll do color.white. This takes in a parameter called line width and we'll do all four. Let's get rid of the right hand side so we've got more room for our code. And you don't see it yet, but this has a white border. So if I change the color to dot color dot red and just re make sure you've got circle named correctly, otherwise it won't work. Typically Xcode, if your code is wrong, the preview will show an error. Perfect, so we've got a white border here and you can keep on chaining effects onto it just with new dots. So if we do dot shadow, we can add a shadow with radius of 10. And we're gonna change the color to white of the border. We can see we have a nice profile image coming together quite quickly in a few lines of code. So how can we add that to our content view? Well, they've made it super simple. Head on over to our content view once the preview is loaded at the top of the vertical stack, just above the text ginger, we simply call profile image. We don't have any parameters to pass in since we have the direct image of the cat and we can see it loads straight away. We don't have to mess around with importing anything at all. We've got the picture of our nice little kitty there. How useful is that? Okay, the final thing we're going to do is we're going to add a map down the bottom here. And that map is going to use UIKit. So I'm going to show you how we can use that to combine both UIKit and Swift UI. So we'll go file, new file, Swift UI view, hit next. We're going to name this map view, hit create. And we've got it added into our project. Going to resume that automatic preview. And we've got our hello world there. So up the top, we're going to do imports map kit. 
And to use the UI kit, we will need to get rid of this there body. And in here, we must have two functions. We'll have func make UI view context of the type context. And this is going to output a MK map view. And this will return MK map view brackets frame dot zero. So this is actually outputting our view. And then to update the view, we need to call func update UI view underscore view of the type MK map view and context once again of the type context. And in here, I'm going to copy some code from the Apple developer website that's simply UI kit code. So you'll notice that this isn't actually any Swift UI code, it's straight up UI kit code. So now on the right hand side, I've hit resume to update our live preview. So we can see here our map adds, but nothing actually happens. That's because of the UI kit view, this update UI view gets called to update the view and the live preview doesn't do that unless we hit this blue run button here. And that's actually going to run this code now to update that view and set the coordinates. So let's give it a second to load. All right, perfect. We can see our map has loaded up here. It's not Sydney, obviously, but you can have a play around with the coordinates if you want to change it to any region you like. So that's how we can add a UI view. You simply change the structure of a Swift UI to output a type UI view representable. And then it must have two functions in it. First of all, make UI view. The second one, update UI view. So now if we go back to our content view, we are going to find the spacer that added spacing between the location and the adopt button. And if we just simply add map view, close that off. We can see here it adds our map view. If we hit the run button on here, once again, it's going to actually show the default location of that map view. Okay, so there we have a Swift UI, ladies and gentlemen. It's so simple to use. I'm excited to see what can be done with it. I really love the live preview because you can actually see your app taking shape. And I think it's a really good step forward because storyboards, while handy, maintaining them is an absolute nightmare, whereas coding the UI can get quite tedious, whereas Swift UI finds a good balance with a lot of these useful stacks and functions. We can simply chain on properties of an item, such as the font size, the font color, and so on. And it will update in the live preview, and you can also change it from there. Um, just a quick note, you can't actually change the properties. We've got the run button selected. So hit stop. And then you can now select your items again. So you can go to inspect, do a bunch of fancy things on it, which is super useful. As you select them, it highlights the relevant place in the code. So you can download the source code for this below. Don't forget to subscribe and like for more tutorials.